And another woman, she might not want her husband or her son to be looking at these things. It's acceptable. You understand? Yeah. So there's some basic basic rules. She doesn't have to be dressed in a niqab necessarily. Or hijab. Or hijab. But there has to be some modesty. So they have basic rules. But if you go to certain Muslim countries, Oman, Dubai, K Qatar, you know, the women, they dress modestly. They might yeah. wear some long trousers. They may wear a blouse. They cover their arms. They cover their bodies. You know, in a Muslim country, there's a, you know, the norms of society. Just like we in England, we have our norms of society, we have our moral code here. And um, if somebody comes in, uh, we, they come in and they behave in a certain way. We have the right in England to say, look, our moral uh, norms in society here are not these things. So I'm sorry, we don't accept that here. You understand my point? So we should, in England or in the West, we should not feel that the Western moral code is an absolute and everything we say here is right and everything they do there is wrong. They have their moral consensus. It may come from religion. It may come from their tradition. That's their moral code. We have to respect that when we go there. Just like we ex expect people to respect British moral code when they come here. Right? There has to be an, a fair exchange. That's, that's really, what about uh, what about the jizya for the non-Muslims? The, the jizya, look, the jizya is just like a tax. The Muslim actually has to pay much more than the jizya. Zakat is more. Zakat, zakat is more than jizya. So a government needs money to operate. You need an army. You need a defense army, you need to do the roads, you need lighting, you need hospitals. So the Muslim has to pay zakah and he has to give a sadaqah regularly, right? I mean, it's not compulsory, but it's very highly recommended. And mashallah, most Muslims, they do give. They give a lot of money. In fact, in this country, in England, they did a statistic in the Guardian newspaper and they did Muslim, Christian, Jew, atheist, Hindu, Sikh. They found that the most charitable people, more than 440 or 50 pound per year, the Muslim person was giving. Okay, so now the jizya means, what does the jizya mean? People say, oh, it's to humiliate the non-Muslim, it's to keep them down, it's to, no, 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 not at all. When the non-Muslim gives jizya, number one, he doesn't have to defend the state in the military. Okay. So if somebody comes to attack the country, he can say, listen, I've paid my tax. You defend me. You Muslims have to defend me now. You go and risk your life and defend my property and defend my life and my family because I've given the tax of jizya. So if someone is in the military, the military is, is not going to pay the jizya? No, of course. Everyone, ha everyone has to pay the jizya. This is, but he, it's not compulsory for him to join the army. But for the Muslim, it's compulsory. If the Christian or the Jew or the atheist is being attacked, the Muslim has to risk his own life and stop the attack against his fellow uh, countrymen. Countryman Jew, countryman uh, Christian, countryman atheist, because he's given his jizya, he's given his tax. And so this concept is very widely misunderstood in the West. They see it as a, a, an oppressive tax on the non-Muslim. The Muslim has to pay more and he has far more responsibilities. And in Spain, when the Crusaders came in and the Muslims could not defend the Jews and the Christians, what did they do? Do you know? They gave them the money back. They gave them the jizya back. They said, look, I'm sorry, but the armies are too strong. We can't defend you. Please take your jizya back. So this is, Islam, alhamdulillah, is a very fair and a very just system. 
unfortunately some of us Muslims have made it unjust because we bring our tradition culture politics and all of these horrible things but alhamdulillah look if the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the Quran says it very clearly that if you were not just and you were not you know of good character a good person these people around you would have never accepted you now why did they accept him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because they knew he was honest he was sincere and they knew that there was no one better that they had ever met in their entire lives to match the character of the Prophet ﷺ. They knew this. Many of them who fought him for decades, some of them who still did not accept Islam, but secretly they admitted that Wallahi Allah is our witness because they believed in Allah as well. They believed in the Supreme God. They believed the greatest God was Allah. They even believed that concept. And they said that he is a, an honest man. He is a just man. I have a last question if you don't mind. The, the Prophet Muhammad, he's not like just a, 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 like a spiritual, he's not like just a prophet come to teach the people how God forgive the sin. Or, he come to establish the state as well, is he? Well, this is why the, the book written by, I think it's, uh, uh, I think it's Jonathan Hart, is it? Michael Hart. Michael Hart, Michael Hart, right? In that, he discusses the most influential person of history. And he picks a hundred people. And the reason why he picks Prophet Muhammad as number one, he said he was successful in every field. He succeeded as a religious leader, as a moral code, as a political leader. Uh, on the whole spectrum of leadership, He's the only one that managed to tick all of the boxes. Now my question is, is all the prophets, they came to do that or just the prophet Muhammad? Well, they all came with the law. No, do they come all of them to like, as a, not just as a spiritual leaders, as political leaders as well or just? Well, this, this term political leader, whatever, you know, the definition of this political leader today has become very murky, murky, very, um, there's, there's a lot of connotations, a lot, lot of uh, different understanding of politician or political. When you, when you have a government that is in control of the affairs of the people, in modern terms, it becomes a political and a religious yeah. code. Yeah. And so, the, the, of course, you know, look, there are many systems within an Islamic system that may fall not necessarily literally within the definition of the Quran and Islam. So for example, I'll give you an argument. If you have a plane crash and people die and this happens or that happens, you know, there are certain things that you will employ that might be just a, a, a question of governance, but not necessarily, you know, how are you going to conduct the investigation? Well, you're going to go to people who know how to do these things, right? You're not going to go to the Sheikh and say, Sheikh, uh, this plane crashed. And can you tell me from the Quran and from the Sunnah how I'm going to investigate this uh, engine failure on this aircraft? You understand? You will go to somebody who knows they may not be Muslim, right? They might be non-Muslim, they may be atheist, they may be uh, Christian, they may be Jew, but they may have an expertise. And so Islam does not stop you from going to those who know, have knowledge. You understand? But the moral code, morality, uh, justice, fairness, uh, how you treat one another, this of course we get from Islam. And all the prophets, they came to establish that. Oh, well, look, oh, well, if you look at, for example, Judaism, uh, the Jewish laws, yes? Um, within Israel at the moment, much of the laws is actually sec secular laws, right? But if they were truly following Moses, peace be upon him, 
then really a lot of their laws, if not most, if not all of their laws, Similar. should be based upon what the teachings of Moses were. Torah, yeah. Or the Torah, right? Uh, same with Christianity. If they truly thought that this was the way of life and this was the solution to all of our problems, then why rely on a state that doesn't even follow those principles of Jesus? Where many things are done which are unfair. Yeah, but and the unjust. Christians, the Christians, they say, well, uh, Jesus, he doesn't care about politics. He didn't care. Well, they, they say that they leave unto Caesar what is Caesar's. In yeah, other words, that, yeah. you know, we, we leave the the running of the country, we leave the running of the country to, to, to the, the rulers and we have, the, our religion is private in our churches but the, the problem you have is that what if the rulership contradicts with what you believe? You have a fundamental problem then. Maybe they want to push things on society that are harmful. What if tomorrow in this country they legalize prostitution? And if you're a Christian and you know that Jesus would not have accepted this as a moral moral code. What are you going to do? There's a problem now, isn't there? I don't think so. He would close his hand if Jesus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This is what I'm saying. So, but uh, you know. Anyway, thank you. Very well, nice to talk to you. Yeah. Oh, I'm a Muslim, but I need, I need, this, I need this. brother. We're all learning. Yeah, I need the. I, I come here sometimes. I make a mistake. The brothers correct me. They say, oh, "Brother Abbas, you said this. This is wrong." I say, "Okay, okay. Stuff for the love Forgive me. We're all learning. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, uh, nice What a beautiful twist at the end of the video. I had no idea that he was Muslim. I wouldn't even I wasn't even thinking that when he was asking these questions. I thought I didn't put him under any religion, but that was the last thing that I expected to hear, which is very, very amazing. Muslims asking Muslims questions where they're not clear. This is what we want to see more of. This is what we want um these are the questions we want asked and head of and this was a very very peaceful conversation i just wish the other guy was more um we could hear his voice more otherwise the questions were quite interesting i think i asked questions at the end of the other video part of the video so i don't think i have any for this um ending so yeah let me know what you think make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video